<laughs> hey, Lyoko Warriors. This is Captain Yeet here for you for another Cold Lyoko episode review. This is going to be Cold Lyoko Season 4, Episode 13, titled Lab Rat. So let's get into it. And before we get into it, actually, this is our 80th episode of Cold Lyoko. <laughs> let's go, baby. We made it 80 episodes. We only get... Uh, this, uh, sorry. I think there's only 95 episodes. We're on Episode 13. There's 30 episodes in this last season, so... I think we are going to get to 95. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure there's only 95 episodes concurrently. I think so, unless it's 94. I don't know. But this is number 80. Big milestone. <laughs> I know we did uh, episode 50 last year. <laughs> Crazy. So let's get into this episode. It's a big moment, you know. That's how I had to wear the, the tux <laughs> today. Uh, number 80. So <laughs> the episode starts off with the opening. After the opening, we cut to Aelita, Odd, Orc and Jeremy in the cafeteria. Everybody's sitting down eating their food, and Jeremy explains about how he's able to virtualize you guys. Well, he can virtualize everybody on Earth from the skin. Obviously, everybody's really excited. And it was kind of a funny joke because, you know, Jeremy, he goes into like every single detail about all the mathematics and everything he had to do in order to make this possible. Obviously, they don't really understand besides Alita, but Odd, he explains it in English pretty well, like I just said it. And Orc's like, wow, you, you actually understood that? He goes, hey, I think I heard this uh, mathematics. Well, he said something else. But, you know, I think I understand this pretty well now. Orc's like, you didn't say that right. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I said it just about right. Then it cuts to everybody going outside. Yumi walks up. Jeremy explains to Yumi that they're going to test out the program to send you guys to Earth to find out what supercomputer Xana is using to do whatever he's doing. And I mean, sorry, <laughs> I'm already stuttering. Yumi's like, wow, really? Okay, I mean, yeah, I'll be there tonight at the factory. And then Oric, he walks out the cafeteria. He goes, hey, hey, Yumi, can I uh, talk to you for a second? Or can I ask you a question? And Yumi just looks at him and walks away. And then I was like, whoa, hey, that was a pretty mean cold soda, man. What you do to deserve that? Oric's like, I don't even know. She started acting like that about a day before yesterday. But I have no idea what I did. Oric goes, you know, her birthday was the day before yesterday. I'm hope, I hope you said happy birthday, because you know how she is with that kind of stuff. Org's like, no, are you kidding me? Oh, she's going to hate me for weeks. This is ridiculous. Odd goes, hey, don't sweat it. Just buy her a birthday gift, and then everything will be smoothed over. Org's like, that's a good idea. But I wish I could. And then we get a little flashback to Jim yelling at Org, because <laughs> apparently Org threw a piece of fish out of a window, and that piece of fish that had flung out the window Hit Jim right in the face. So he's yelling at Orc. Orc's like, hey, you got the wrong guy. It wasn't me. He goes, oh, so you want a back talk? Okay, instead of two hours of study hall, you got four hours. Now you better get your butt over there or I'm going to make it eight hours, okay? And then we cut back to real time. He goes, oh, I got four hours of study hall. This is ridiculous. I goes, you know what? I got to go get some dog stuff for Kiwi. So I'll buy the gifts for you, me, and give it to you so you can give it to her. Or like, wow, are you serious? You do that for me? Yeah, I don't sweat it, buddy. Of course I will. And besides, I owe you one. Why? Well, you know, uh, I was the one that threw the fist out the window. He goes, what? Are you serious? And grabs him by the collar. He goes, hey, I would have told him it was me, but I was laughing too hard. He goes, you know what, Odd? I yada. And then the bell rings, and he just lets go of him. He goes, whatever, and walks to study hall. It was so funny because Orc, he looks so... I mean, I'd be mad, too. <laughs> Like he was gonna kill that man. Look at his face. My goodness. <laughs> I'm gonna saw your orange face. He really looked like he was gonna kill Odd. <laughs> I mean, if I have four hours of detention, yeah, i will be pretty mad too. I don't even gotta move the camera. Look at him. <laughs> Look how mad he is. Jeez, at least. Anyway, uh, after that, it cuts to nighttime, and then everybody goes over to the factory. While they're running up to the factory, Oric and Odd are the last ones to go on that piece of rope to jump down to the elevator. Odd gives him the gift, and Oric's like, oh, wow, thank you. What is it? He goes, eh, let it be a surprise. And then Jeremy's like, okay, guys, come on, let's hurry up. Odd goes, hey, come on, man. We're not factory workers. Oric, well, I mean, we kind of are. And they all get into the elevator. Oh, yeah, I was, <laughs> I was trying to say escalator, but I said elevator. I don't know why it started like that. <laughs> anyway... Oric, he looks at Yumi. Yumi looks at Oric and just looks at Alita. She goes, hey, Alita, how was your classes today? Oh, they were fine. And everybody gets to Lyoko. They get inside the skid. And then they go into the network. 
And he has a really cool team shot where right before Jeremy closes the door for the elevator to go up, it's a really cool team shot. Everybody is standing there. I really liked it. <laughs> I really liked this. Boom. I got it. Okay. I was kind of fear if I wouldn't be able to get it because it happened so fast. <laughs> the, door, the door is closing so fast, but here we go. This is right. As soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, I got it. Boom, baby. <laughs> I like it. I like it. This is a really cool shot. I like it I very much. <laughs> I like it very much. Okay. So, like I said, everybody gets to Lyoko and they get inside the skid. We don't even get the seat on virtualize. It literally just cuts to them running towards the skid. They're not already on the platforms and they get energized onto the skid. <laughs> we don't get to see them go into the scanners and get virtualized. That was kind of funny. Well, I mean, I guess they were just... You know, trying to get into this episode faster. Instead of telling us all that. I mean, we've seen it, we've seen it dozens of times. <laughs> we've seen that hundreds of times. So it's not really something that's new to us, you know. Um, and th and th sorry, I was thinking about moving this mirror over to this door where my old mirror was. Because there's a lot of glare and stuff. So if you guys want me to do that, I can't have that. I guess I could keep it there. But every time I turn, you know, it's a lot of glare. So I don't know if that's hurting you guys or not. Well, <laughs> not hurting it, but you know, like, you know, watching this, like, ah, jeez, Captain Yee, <laughs> that glare from the mirror is killing me. Anyway, everybody gets inside of the skid while they're in the skid. Uh, the, <laughs> sorry, while they're inside the skid, um, Odd says a joke. And after he says the joke, I forgot what the joke was, we're gonna look at the subtitle to get the joke. And after he says the joke, or it goes, can't somebody just shut him up? Yumi says, why? think it's pretty nice and then i go wait hey, wow it's a miracle they're both talking and they both go shut up odd <laughs> he just looks down i forget what odd said though oh it's not even a joke odd says replica here we come and then that's when org say Can somebody shut him up so they go over to the teleporter that's inside the digital c and we actually get to see what it looks like inside of the teleporter when they go inside of it and it's nothing really too special it's just a bunch of pink yeah, that's really it. Look, it's just a bunch of pink swirls and stuff going around. Nothing too special, but I thought it was pretty cool to still show you guys that we actually do get to see what what it looks like inside the teleportal in the digital scene. Yeah, nothing too special, just pink swirls and white streaks. Nothing too crazy, but hey, still cool to know what it looks like. <laughs> so, anyway, they get out of the teleporter. They go over to the replica. They get inside of the replica. And in order to send somebody into the physical world from the replica, they have to, well, they specifically use the word merge or mage. Yeah, they specifically use the word mage to a tower. They have to connect the skid, well, mage the skid to a tower. Now, when Alita goes over to a, uh, when Alita goes over to a not activated tower so they can mage it to the tower, this like stream of energy comes out of the skid, connects to the tower, Jeremy activates the tower, then they're able to energize them on earth which is kind of weird because i don't know what mage means but it kind of just looks like they connected to the tower so i guess just connect the skid to a tower but i guess mage is a cool word too and he also mentions about how xana activated the tower inside this replica too so he's probably doing something up to no good on earth and wherever this other supercomputer is so they have to hurry up and get there and destroy it because whatever he's doing it can't be good so, anyway, here's a really cool animation where the skid mages. <laughs> don't know why. It's not funny to me. But here's a cool animation where it mages to the tower. It's, it's so weird. <laughs> it's just, it's just, I don't know why. They could have just said connect. But, I mean, it's still pretty cool, too. But here, see, like, that stream of energy comes out. It connects to the tower, and then Jeremy activates the tower. But that's what it looks like when the skid mages to a tower. Pretty cool. <laughs> Pretty cool. Anyway, Jeremy goes, okay, we're mags. Now I can send you guys on Earth. So he clicks a button. A leader, he gets energized out of the skid. So it is odd. Then the camera pans down to work. He goes, uh, hey, Jeremy, it didn't work. I'm still here. He goes, oh, yeah, that's right. I only chose to send Alita and Odd there because I want you and Yumi to stay here to protect the skid. If anything like last time it happens, then I'm probably going to attack it. Or goes, oh, okay, but at least he could have told us so we can choose who goes. Yumi goes, oh, wow, you really want to stay with me, don't you? That's not how I meant it. <laughs> like, you know, that's not how I meant it. I just meant we could have, like, asked us, you know, to see who wanted to go on that. Anyway, 
we pan over to uh, Jeremy, and Jeremy's like, okay, well, you guys go ahead and walk around and protect the skid. I'm going to talk to Aelita and Odd. Aelita, Odd, no voices. And he starts to panic, and he starts to type on his computer. Now, Odd goes, hey, Einstein, we're here. Oh, jeez, man. You have to blow up my eardrums. I'm here, I'm here. Then we pan over to Aelita and Odd, and we get to see exactly what they look like on Earth. And they look just like the Lyoko cells, but a lot different. It looks pretty cool. I like that. And this is the 80th episode, too. That's what I'm talking about. It's linked up so nicely. <laughs> it linked up so nicely. Anyway, this is what Alita and Odd looks like on Earth while on Lyoko, kind of. There's a better few. This is there's a few better shots of them in this form. So I'm going to show you guys then. But basically, Odd was confused that they, you know, they look like the on Lyoko. But they're on Earth, and they're in a jungle. Now, Jeremy is pinpointing their location. They're in the Amazon jungle, <laughs> when they had to find a laboratory where the supercomputer is. Also, Jeremy mentions that he didn't actually send their actual bodies to the j Amazon jungle. He basically sent a specter type of form, like Xana does, to Earth that has the person, not the, not the personality, Basically, he sent a specter of themselves. He sent... Actually, I'm just reading the subtitles. <laughs> um, he says, yes, you're both... I mean, yes, you're, you're you, but those aren't your real bodies. More like a kind of specters in an image. Or virtual manifestations. Alita and I become specters. Okay, so that's basically what they are. <laughs> I don't know why. Anyway, I'm like, so how are we supposed to find a laboratory in the jungle? Look behind a tree? And Lita goes, yeah, that's exactly right. And they go behind one tree, and the laboratory is right there. <laughs> the laboratory is right there. I mean, anyway, let me put my towel back there for TV. So, we cut away from my Lita and Odd, and we go back to Lyoko. Now, Oric is like, Yumi, look, I'm sorry. Don't make a big deal out of this. You know, if you forget my birthday... I wouldn't make a big deal out of this. She goes, that's the thing. I wouldn't forget your birthday. I don't forget. Oh, you me, like, come on. You just gotta, and then Jeremy comes back out of nowhere. Okay, guys, I'm back. Everything going cool there? And then Ori goes, well, it's a bit chilly, but then a laser comes out of nowhere. And then he hits him in the face. He jumps back. And then they look, and it's three tarantulas and William. And William's riding on one. So Jeremy makes two vehicles for them. They charge at him, and then... Oryx says, hey, I'll take care of Handsome. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. And they charge at him. So <laughs> that's exactly what happened. Is Yumi runs out to go attack one random tarantula while Oryx goes to fight the tarantula that William's riding on. And then I forgot to mention the last episode. I think it was the last episode. I know in this episode he talks to. William can still talk while he's in his Xena form. I think he has talked a few times while he's been possessed while I've been reviewing these episodes, but I guess I haven't brought it up. Every time he does talk, it really surprises me because he doesn't normally talk. And whenever he does talk, it's only like a few words. And it's, you know, you know, it's kind of distorted and deep. But you know, every time he talks, it just kind of surprises me. I don't know why. I mean, I wouldn't think he wouldn't be able to talk. But I don't know. It, it just kind of surprises me. I, I guess it's because it's, this is basically, I guess this is basically Xana talking through William. Like, this is Xana talking. We never had heard Xana talk. I'm guessing this would be Xana talking through William. So she's talking, right? So that, that, that's pretty cool, I guess. I can't really remember any of his specters who controlled people talk to them. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't remember, like, Sissy getting controlled by a specter and then she's talking to Jeremy, like, yeah, you're done. I remember Jeremy Specter did that when the whole Ghost Channel Two World thing happened. Well, I guess that I guess that's when Xana talked to them specifically. But, yeah. <laughs> that's not a circle. <laughs> anyway, here's a bit more good of a shot of um, Aelita and Odd in the real world as their Lyoko counterparts. Anyway, we cut back to them after... Oh, my bad. Did I actually... Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. My bad. I almost forget. I was talking about this whole talking thing that threw me off. Anyway, <clears throat> back on track. Um, Oric, he uh, rides over to William jumps in the air, throws his sword, it lands right into the target of the tarantula, it blows up, then he lands back on his bike, and then he like nearly goes over the eggs to the digital sea. 
Then we cut back to Aileen and Odd. When we cut back to them, it's like, you know, either going left or right down a hallway. Aileen wants to go right, but I goes, no, let's go left. She goes, how do you know? Hey, it's my instinct intuition. Don't worry, we got this. So they walk down a the hallway. They look inside of a mirror door, and it's a scientist working. I makes a little bit of a noise. The scientist turns around and sees nobody. He's being controlled by Xana. And the camera pans down, and I lead an eye, like, you know, on the ground. They're like, okay, shh. So they got to they, they gotta, they, they gotta crawl to make sure no one else can see them. Anyway, like I said, here's a bit better look of Odd and Alita in the Xana, not Xana, in their Lyoko type forms on Earth. We look pretty cool. <laughs> I mean, I mean we already seen it before, but just seeing it not on Lyoko, it seems pretty cool. <laughs> I don't know why, but it seems very cool. Anyway, yeah, we already talked about that. So, Jeremy, next Jeremy, we cut back to Lyoko. Yumi, she takes out a tarantula with her fans. Nothing too cool. She just throws them, cuts that neck, boom, big explosion. Then, Orc, he gets, he's on his bike. He rides over, grabs his sword, jumps over to William. They start the fight. Then we cut back to Odd and Aelita, and when they're walking around, they find a room. And this, inside this room is a big, clear tank. Inside this tank are a bunch of spiders. <laughs> Xana type spiders. Obviously, Jeremy's like, hey, how's it going on on, you guy, on your guy's side? They mention about how Xana's making these spiders now, which is pretty bad. I mean, Xana's making spiders on Earth, which is pretty bad. Well, basically tarantulas, real life tarantulas, but roboticized tarantulas on Earth. And he's probably going to mass produce these. So obviously, this isn't too good. They got to find a supercomputer and they stop it now. <laughs> so let me turn the camera back that was a pretty good side of this too anyway while they're looking at these spiders and trying to figure out what to do or these tarantulas trying to figure out what to do a scientist comes in and starts to fight Odd and Alita and their powers look different on earth now when Odd, when Odd uses his laser arrows they like these perf they like these purple electricity arrows that shoot out the scientists the scientist dodges it jumps Hits Odd and he goes flying. And Odd goes, hey, ah, that really hurt for some reason. And then he goes to attack Aelita. She can use energy field and she throws one at him. And then he shoots a bolt of electricity and she makes a shield of herself. But the electricity is too much and it blows her back too. I think that, and then we cut away again. And I forgot to mention that I guess this program to like send them to Earth, because they're already digitalized on Lyoko. Then you gotta digitalize them again on Earth. I guess this program is too much strain or they just basically they don't have like forever on earth as their Lyoko counterparts. They only have 13 minutes. So they got to hurry up and do whatever they got to do. Cause after 13 minutes, they're going to get sent right back to Lyoko. I forgot to mention that. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> I completely forgot to mention that. Anyway, this is what the powers look like on Lyoko, which looks pretty cool. Uh, here we go. I skipped, I skipped ahead a bit too much. Boom. A scientist walks in. I use the legs of arrow. They look like these purple purple streaks of electricity. And then I lead us. He can use energy field. And it looks pretty cool, if I do say so myself. Ah, uh, it's not sewing up yet. Yeah, and he's looking down. Okay, yeah, I'm sewing the screen. Okay, I gotta... <laughs> I was sewing the screen for too long. I gotta move away. Nah, I'm finna I'm show you guys the energy field for my leader. And the cool shield thing she did. Okay, and this is what energy field looks like for a leader. That looks pretty cool, right? Uh, let's cover that. Here we go, energy field. And as he shoots electricity, and she's able to make a shield. Which is pretty cool. Now, it's so bright, you can't really see it, but you can see it's like a dome around a leader, so. That's whatever. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Yeah, okay, yeah. We do cut away after Alina gets blown back. After she gets blown back, we cut back to Oric, and Oric is still fighting William, and Oric's able to disarm William. Now, William calls it, well, turns his sword black into black mist, calls his sword back. Oric runs up to finish William, but then he grabs his sword, boom, right in his gut. He goes, ah, oh, he virtualized. Now he's back on Earth, and he's chilling with Zeremi. We cut back over to Yumi. Yumi takes out the last tarantula. She starts to fight William. She throws both her fans at William, but William catches both her fans, turns them red, and then poof, they virtualize the fans. <laughs> Yumi's like, uh, Jeremy, I need some more fans, and right now, 
I could have sworn she lost both her fans and he just called and like grabbed another one. But Jeremy says he has to, you know, obviously Yumi says I need some more fans right now. Jeremy says right now. Okay, uh, that's gonna take a minute, but just you know, just be careful. I got this, and he starts to tie. It takes Jeremy a while to make her two fans. I don't know why. Whenever he has to refill odds uh, um, laser arrows, I mean, it doesn't take. It takes a while. It doesn't take this long. It never took this long to refill the arrows. It's it, like maybe a minute or so. I can't remember a time where Orc lost his sword and he had to re digitalize a sword for him. I can't remember that ever. I just remember either Orc. Ever, if Orc lost his sword, he has to catch it again or grab it again. Or if he lost his sword, he lost his sword. <laughs> so I never, I never remember Orc asking Jeremy, "Hey, I need another sword." I don't ever remember that happening. And Alita, she can use her stuff infinitely, so it's, it's whatever. <laughs> anyway, we cut back over to Alita and Odd. Now Odd comes behind the scientist, tries to hit him with a crowbar. He catches it. Then Alita sees he's distracted, hits him with an energy field. He goes flying out the room. Now after that, Odd finds a door. He goes, okay, we'll put him in here. So he grabs him, drags his body over, goes to put him in a separate room. He wakes up. He fights Odd. Then Alita, then Alita goes, hey, scientist. Sucks him with an energy field. He flies into the room. They close the door. Okay. Now to time. Now to find the, you know, okay, we got it. Now to find that um, supercomputer. My bad. <laughs> I'm stuttering a little bit. Uh, now to find a supercomputer. We cut back over to Lyoko for a split second to see Yumi. She's just ducking and weaving the slashes that William's doing to her. But he's getting closer and closer. So she keeps telling Jeremy, like, I need my fans back. Now, I'm in trouble. He goes, I'm working as fast as I can. <laughs> we cut back over to Oric. Well, we cut back over to the real world. Oric, he comes up. He goes, so, how's it going? Or uh, Jeremy goes, you wouldn't have to have a lucky rabbit's foot, a four-leaf clover, or a lucky charm, huh? It's that bad, huh? <laughs> Jeez. That's pretty bad. Anyway, we cut over to Aelita and Odd. They found a room where the supercomputer is, but there's a cold for it. Aelita goes, don't worry, I got this. She hovers her hand over it, closes her eyes. You hear the music when she sings, then the door opens. That's pretty cool ability. I didn't know she could have. Okay. Here's a really good shot. <laughs> here's a dope shot of them on Leo. I mean, on Earth. <laughs> this is going to get confusing. But here's a dope shot. Anyway, I noticed that he doesn't have the Kiwi symbol on his chest. He has it on his shoulder pads, but he doesn't have it on his chest. This is interesting. I don't know why, but hey, it's whatever. Anyway, they're able to get into the room, but the supercomputer is guarded by a force field, so nothing they can do really really can affect it. So that's pretty bad. Jeremy's able to make two more fans for Yumi, but as soon as he grabs them, she gets divertalized by William. Then he goes inside the tower. And then Alita goes, hey, look at that little department down there right next to the supercomputer. I think that's the thing giving the energy to the seals. I goes, okay, I guess I'll destroy the supercomputer and hit that tiny target. And then three more scientists bust into the room. Alita makes a shield to ward them off. Odd suits a laser arrow, deactivates the shield. And he goes, okay, laser. And then they get devirtualized off of Earth. Because William, he walked into the tower and did cold as Anna. <laughs> ah, so close. Like, literally, as soon as he said laser arrow to destroy it, boom. They get devirtualized <laughs> back on Lyoko. Obviously, they're really confused. Jimmy mentions about what happened. He did call Xana, so you have to get out of there. And then it's kind of funny because on the 50th episode of Cold Lyoko that I reviewed, they mentioned Dr. Doom. So I'll put, so I'll put Dr. Doom in the thumbnail and France Hopper came. And then <laughs> on this 80th episode of Cold Lyoko, Jeremy says, okay, well, all right, Alita, you have to get out of there. Spider-Man and his troops are there. He just said Spider-Man. I'm going to put Spider-Man in the thumbnail. I'm going to try to. I'm going to try to. I got to put... I'm going to do a regular image. So I don't know if I can really put Spider-Man in there. But I'm going to try. I'm going to try to make it look good too. But hey, they mentioned Spider-Man. <laughs> That's so dope. Anyway, after they leave Lyoko, we cut back to... Yo, that matches too perfectly. Hey, look at this. That's one long image. You see this? That's one long image. That is pretty cool. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't even, yo, that, <laughs> that's cool. That's really dope. I like that. Okay. Anyway, my bad. That, that really distracted me. <laughs> I like that. 
Anyway, uh, we cut back to Earth, and obviously everybody's kind of down their luck that they, that they didn't get to destroy the supercomputer. Or it goes, hey, nobody get sad or anything. I mean, we did the best we can, and we know exactly where it is, so we just got to try again. And Jeremy's like, yeah, don't worry. Tomorrow we're going to try again and destroy that supercomputer. We got to make sure Atlanta cannot use those robotic tarantulas or whatever else he's making up in there. It can't be good. So everybody walks outside, and when they walk outside... Or it gives the present to Yumi, and he goes, so are you going to open it? She goes, oh, no. In Japan, it's not uh, in our culture in Japan, we don't open our gifts in front of the people that gave it to us. He goes, oh, okay, wow. And then we pan over to Alita and Jeremy, and Alita looks kind of sad. Jeremy goes, oh, just making you think about your own birthday? She goes, yeah, I don't even know when I was born. I don't know my own birthday. That's one thing I really can't remember. And then he goes, hey, you can choose a day. She goes, nah, you choose it. Okay. She goes, so when is it? Ah, nah, ha, ha. It's going to be a surprise. Don't you worry. Wow, <laughs> that's sweet. I like the interaction. That was really sweet. <laughs> that was really, I really like the interaction. That was sweet. Anyway, um, we cut back over to Oric and Odd's dorm room. And Oric, I mean, I'm sorry. Adi's opening a gift for Kiwi. And Ori's like, oh, man. And he, Ori goes, hey, man, thank you again for the gift. Uh, what you get her anyway? He goes, oh, no, nah, it'll be a surprise. You'll see. You mean he opens the gift, the gift for Kiwi, and it's a necklace. And then Ori goes, that's a weird dog collar. Kind of fancy for him, don't you think? Odd. <laughs> then we cut over to Yumi opening her gift from Ori, and it's a dog it's a dog bone that squeaks. It's a, squeak, it's a squeaky toy. She goes, huh? And then we get the credits. So he mixed up the gifts. <laughs> Odd mixed up the gifts for Oric and Kiwi. And then we get the credits. <laughs> that was pretty funny. <laughs> it's just so funny that it what makes it even more funny that Oric didn't even notice he did that. He just sees like this really nice, beautiful necklace that Odd's holding. He goes, Hey, that's a weird dog collar for Kiwi. <laughs> like, what that's a necklace. <laughs> like <laughs> I think that's what makes it even more funny. Oric doesn't even realize like, oh, you mixed up the gifts. <laughs> like, you got to be kidding me. That was that. <laughs> that's pretty funny. But that's the end of the episode. So, woohoo. Let's go. 80 episodes. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Man, I, I remember as a kid, I really liked the episode whenever Jeremy sent whoever to Earth and uh, from Lyoko. Because, you know, the end of Lyoko outfits and able to use that powers on Lyoko. Which was so cool. I like that. I mean, in the way it looks, too. I loved that. Whenever he had a sense of one day, I loved it as a kid. And this is the first episode they're able to do that. So that's dope. <laughs> that's really dope. So, like, share, and subscribe. I'll see you all later. Thank you all for watching. I thank you all there for being wonderful human beings. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. All right. Lyoko Warriors.